Hi there everyone, in this video we're looking at two polysaccharides, starch and glycogen. Okay, so when we think about starch just as a whole then, starch is a polysaccharide, so it's a very large molecule and it's a large molecule made of alpha glucose molecules all bonded together. And what people often don't realise is that it's actually a mixture. So starch is made up of two different molecules. We have amylose and we have amylopectin. So we're going to look at both of these in detail, but just as an overview, amylase is a coiled molecule. So it's, a, it's a, basically it's, a, it's one long chain all coiled up, whereas amylopectin is branched. Okay, they're the key differences. Amylose is a coiled molecule and amylopectin is a branched molecule. So looking in more detail then, here is an alpha glucose molecule, just that we're not going to draw all the bonds, but here is our basic chain with our carbons numbered. If we then have a second alpha glucose molecule, we know that we can uh, bond them together with a glycosidic bond. So there's our glycosidic bond there. Okay, so this is our one four glycosidic bond. So what we've done here is we've uh, we've made our a disaccharide. Okay, so glue two glucose molecules joined together. So this represents maltose. If we keep adding glucose molecules with our condensation reactions, then we've got a big long chain of alpha glucose molecules joined by one four glycosidic bonds and that would be amylose. And we're talking hundreds or thousands of glucose molecules all joined together, okay? We can represent that more simply like this, if we don't want to draw out the rings in detail every time. So that would represent our one four glycosidic bond. We can make it even more simple and just draw it as a line. But we just, you know, we draw it as a line, but we know that that represents all of our alpha glucoses and the bonding there as well. So amylose can be drawn as a line like that, but we know that actually it coils up, okay? Just naturally it coils on its own. And as we said, there are bonds. So amylopectin is a little bit different. Um, here's an example. We're just going to look at um, two branches. In reality, there would be more branching than this. So instead of drawing it like that, we actually, we're going to draw our glucose molecules out because we want to look at how the glucose molecules bond together. So here we've got two of our glucose molecules joined by a glycosidic bond. I'm going to just speed that up a little bit. So what we've got here is a chain and we can see that we've got lots of 1,4 glycosidic bonds. So to form a side branch, we've got to bond these carbons here. So all the way down this straight chain, we've got a 1,4 glycosidic bond here, 1,4 glycosidic bond, 1,4 glycosidic bond. But suddenly here, this side branch, you can see that we've got our one carbon one and our carbon six joined together by a glycosidic bond. And if we continue this side branch, we're then going to add them together. But if you look here, this is now a 1,4 glycosidic bond. So what we've got here is a second straight chain. So there's one straight chain all joined by 1,4 glycosidic bonds. Here's a straight chain joined by 1,4 glycosidic bonds. But to join them together, we use a 1,6 glycosidic bond. Okay. So there we go. The yellow ones are 1,4. And that blue one there represents a 1,6 glycosidic bond. So we do not have 1,6 glycosidic bonds in amylose. We only see them in amylopectin. Okay, so if we want to draw it more simply then, so here's an example. So you can see a straight chain and a side branch. Straight chain, side branch. So each of those points where there's a side branch, where, where branching occurs, each of those would be the place where you see a 1,6 glycosidic bond. Okay, so we need to just think about structure and function. 
the point of a starch molecule is to store glucose so it can then be released, uh, so energy can be released. Okay, uh, let me just go back a little bit there. So the function of glucose, uh, sorry, the function of starch is to store glucose so that energy can be, re re be released at a later date. So there are several ways that a starch, uh, the starch molecules do this. Remember when we say starch molecules, we actually mean amylose and amylopectin, but we still tend to refer to it as a starch molecule, even though there are two different kinds of molecules within it. So starch is insoluble, um, it's compact, and both of those things mean it's good for storage. It's also easy to hydrolyze glucose because you've got lots of glucose molecules at the end of the chains and that's important if we're going to release energy it needs to be easy to do that. So if we're thinking about function uh, function being storage and, and energy release and then the structure is the fact that it's insoluble compact easy to hydrolyze but we can take it one step further why is it that starch is insoluble why is it compact why is it easy to hydrolyze? It's a very large molecule. So amylose and amylopectin are both hundreds of thousands of glucose molecules long. That means it's insoluble. Um, so it has no effect on the osmotic potential of the cell, which is really important if you're going to store something. The compactness comes mainly from amylose. So because amylose is that spiral, that coil, so it's only got one four glycosidic bonds, it means that that part of, uh, of the molecule, the amylose part, is very, very compact. Now, amylopectin is also, you know, it's compact-ish, but it's not as compact as amylose. So if we were to be trying to um, explain the structure and the function, then we would specifically talk about the spiral or the coil of amylose as a result of the 1,4-glycosidic bonds, which makes it compact. And then when we talk about why it's easy to hydrolyze um, to release glucose... We specifically would talk there about amylopectin because of all the branches. And the branches are a result of the 1,6 glycosidic bonds. Okay, so if you look at amylose, it's only got two glycose, uh, glucose molecules available for hydrolysis at each, each time, one at each end. Whereas with amylopectin, because the branches are there, you've got glucose at the end of every single branch that can be hydrolyzed so more glucose is available. So the 1,6 glycosidic bonds mean that it's very easy to hydrolyze a lot of glucose, which means it's suitable for energy, uh, for release of energy. Let's think about glycogen now. So starch is found in plants. Glycogen is found in animals. OK, you won't find either in, in the other. So you won't find starch in animals. Um, unless we eat it, okay, but it doesn't actually form the makeup of the animal itself, and glycogen you won't find in plant tissues or plant cells. But it's very, very similar to starch, and it's particularly very similar to amylopectin. So let's remind ourselves, so here are our two molecules that make up starch, so this is our amylose, and this is our amylopectin. Now I was just talking about the hydrolysis of the glucose, um, so this picture makes that a bit clearer. So these circles show you where glucose can be released. So in amylose, we've got a glucose at the end there that can be released through a hydrolysis reaction, and we've got glucose at this end here. With amylopectin, every single one of these circles represents the end of a branch, and a glucose molecule can be hydrolyzed. So far more glucose can be released from a molecule of, amylo of amylopectin compared to a molecule of amylose. Now, if we think about glycogen, it's found in animals. Animals tend to have a much higher energy requirement than plants because they move. They've got a much higher metabolic rate. So that would suggest that you need a lot more glucose to be available more quickly. So glucose is, needs to be hydrolyzed more readily. As a result of that, glycogen looks a little bit like this. is very similar to amylopectin, but you can see that it's far more branched. 
So glycogen also has the 1,4 glycosidic bonds, which makes the straight chain part, and it has 1,6 glycosidic bonds, which produces the side branches. But glycogen has far more 1,6 glycosidic bonds than amylopectin, which means glycogen has more side branches than amylopectin, which means that there are far more what we call terminal glucose molecules. Okay, that means glucose molecules at the end, which can be hydrolyzed to release the glucose, which can then be used in respiration. So glycogen has more terminal glucose molecules as a result of more 1,6 glycosidic bonds, which means that more energy can be released in a given time, which is better for animals which have a higher metabolic rate. And that talks you through the structure and function of starch and glycogen. And that's it. Thank you.